uh, Morena. Um, I hope everyone's uh, feeling good today after the awards um, evening last night. Um, I'd like to make mention of Lee Hazelwood, our own group controller in the Waikato who received an award. We're proud of you. And once again, it shows we punch well above our weight, I'm sure. So um, last week, I was asked by Dr Horrocks, uh, how do you improve the resilience of your people and assets so your overall risk decreases while at the same time build prosperity across the city or district? Well, actually, I probably wouldn't be here if I knew the answer to that, Joe. but anyway, we can talk about that. Um, I would also like to uh, open up an invitation to uh, Aucklanders, who are probably a large proportion of our 42% of ratepayers that don't even live in our place, but like to enjoy that. Please bring your businesses, bring your people, come and live with us. Thrive on our geothermal energy uh, and save some money in your, uh, in your overheads and uh, please come stay with us. <laughs> we, we want critical mass. Um, anyway, so like I just said, 42% of our ratepayers don't live in our district. So we are quite unique in that way um, and no, we're not the... Uh, North Island version of Queenstown and any reference to that drives me nuts. But we have a really outstanding natural environment that sets us apart from a lot of other districts and it underpins a lot of our economy um, and drawing in visitors and supporting business. And we are a major um, holiday destination and domestic uh, tourism, GPD is quite good at the moment. And, but we're also a major centre for events and we pride ourselves on that. But if we take it back to a really small scale, um, when it comes to resilience, we have some uh, an amazing groups. Um, we have the Tohara Community Support Initiative, which has been a finalist in the Trust Power Community Awards, um, where we work with them to reach goals. And when I say we, council, um, in that um, we collaborate on projects and the way to fund projects, and in that way, um, maybe set up a playground or do something of that nature. And they then go on to find guardians of, of that space so we get community ownership and do away with untoward behaviour and everything else and keep our graffiti team doing what they need to do. Um, we also, um, I was actually part of the comms team at the Topol District Council in 2008 when the amazing policy comms team, everyone else, we came up with the Our Neighbourhood, Our Future concept. And that's still going strong today um, through our TCCP, our TTP, our TP processes. Um, it's still there. And it's an amazing uh, way of how we as council um, work with our communities. And our civil defence manager, Ian, not Norm, Ian, um, yeah, um, fantastic in that he is actually a person that is connected to our communities rather than someone who goes in and says, this is what we're going to do. And so the latest example would be Beasley Park. Uh, we opened a new uh, playground, a pirate's playground, which is fantastic. And Ian had as much of a role in that as the mayor did in the sort of co-hosting, sort of dressed up as Johnny Depp characters and, but ran the, you know, the egg and spoon, the sack races, the sausage sizzles, there's a big CD um, presence. We had annual plan consultation. Um, there were councillors, there were council staff and, it, 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 but that's what we do. We just get together, we take our community groups with us and we plant ourselves in different areas around the um, district and all move together. And I, and I know that through, we've just been working through our draft group plan, is that if you look at a particular picture, Topo looks like it has two community response plans, which to me is um, quite hurtful because I know that there are a lot of conversations going on within our community, within our districts, and 
um, we may not meet the template right now, but we have those relationships and we need our communities to own those to become community response plans before they'll even meet the group's requirements probably, but our community comes first. Um, we have some really cool, uh, as far as resilience goes with our infrastructure, uh, an example would be the water treatment plant in Topol, which has cost us a cool $27 million, um, is, and is quite an amazing thing. And it's not just a water treatment plant, it's, we have a co-benefit design with that in that the top layer is actually a viewing platform, uh, we have different sculptures of art in and out of that. Um, there are some port, uh, pieces where you can actually look down and see the membranes, and if, uh, which cost like a million dollars each or, or something ridiculous, but it, it's interactive and it gives people some sense of um, ownership, I suppose. Um, population, like I said, 52% of our ratepayers don't live in our district. So when it comes to peak times or event times, um, we become quite big and have like five minute traffic jams and things like that, which is hell on our only set of traffic lights, I can tell you. <laughs> but um, we have really good infrastructure in place to cope with that. Um, and our asset management plans uh, are very detailed in, in how we do that. And I, I have to say, if one thing I agree with with central government, with everything they've pushed down on us at local government level, is the 30-year infrastructure strategy is a really good idea. Because, um, yeah, we don't ever want to do Kuiper again, I'm sure. Um, one of the really good news stories, which is mitigating, um, minimising um, uh, hazard risk, in our district is we've just been through a flood hazard change in part of our district towards the southern end of the lake. And I have to say that um, our policy team have been outstanding and I, I couldn't pat them on the back enough. It was such a um, wonderful consultation period and um, the engagement period with them was top notch and now we have properties that have, on their limb reports, you know, you may have the centimetre of water or whatever, um, is all in place. And the community was really open to accepting that, and I think that we've um, been able to protect them and their properties quite well. But I think that's quite a good story because, yes, it was a hazard, but through a change and a well-communicated and change, um, people have been really resilient to that. Um, we, we are very proud that we take part in national exercises like Shakeout last year, which I undertook in the um, senior manager's sort of floor. I don't know where they were, but I was there. Uh, Tangaroa later this year. Really looking forward to that because we will be a, uh, a base for people to come to uh, when they're displaced um, and we'll welcome them with open arms and hopefully keep them, Stephen. Um, but um, we're, we're well set up. We have two main welfare centres in the Topol Township. Um, we have um, Marae and other areas throughout the other two wards in the Topol District ready to go. We have generators um, in all those wards. Um, and yeah, um, emergency management in the Topol District, we're actually a standing committee of council. So emergency management has as much hierarchy in the district as audit and risk. In fact, emergency management committee's been around longer than audit and risk, which probably says a bit. Um, and on that committee, uh, our controllers, um, our, and we get reported to by lifelines, comms, and a whole different raft of people, and representatives from all the wards. Um, and we're very lucky in uh, Suzanne Vowles um, from the ministry is very dedicated to our district, and we 
very much appreciate the time she spends with us, and we have a very close relationship with the South Waikato District Council, and we have Ian um, Wellings, who turns up very regularly, and if we had an undeclared, um, unbudgeted, no capped ceiling on what you can spend sort of activity, I probably would want Ian to be that person, I have to say. Um, we also, I'm sure like everyone else, we have a draft welfare plan which sits underneath you know, the group plan and everything else. And, and, and it's a good um, measure of checks and balances on um, where we are with our community response plans and everything else. So while we have 42% of our ratepayer base not <laughs> living in our district, we also have, due to, uh, according to census, a declining population and an ageing population. So we do, through urban design and everything else, ensure that we're age-friendly. Um, we have um, age-friendly infrastructure and our township is kept um, compact and urban. Um, we also have amazing resources. Um, Ironman New Zealand, which we're very proud to be the hosts of, um, when they come to town, behind all of that is actually a team of two and a half thousand volunteers who are sponsored by, um, uh, are they still called Mighty River Power? I think so, for now. Um, but they're all supported by Mighty River Power, and these people come into town, they give up their lives and completely support the athletes. And so I know that although the number eight wire mentality and like the student army and everything else aren't qualified, um, and if, if, if we were to have some sort of an event, um, our resilient community culture and attitude would be that we'd be all right. So um, once again, Stephen, send them down our way. Uh, we'd, we'd gladly take them, anybody, English, first, second, third language, um, business, as long as they pay their rates. Um, yeah, but um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Topor, we have amazing personnel in place, which also makes us um, as resilient as we are. And we're, we're always keen to talk about ourselves. And um, yeah, and everybody is welcome. And if, yeah, any questions at the end, I suppose. Yeah, thanks, Gina.